in this last section of chapter five, um, we're going to take a look at um, integrating uh, functions that involve inverse trig antiderivatives. So in this section, we're going to have three formulas that we're going to look to apply when we're doing problems that uh, involve inverse trig functions for antiderivatives. Uh, but just like I did in the last section, 5.6, um, there's one problem more likely than not you'll run into uh, most frequently because of the AP test. Uh, and that was in 5.6, the one that involved arc 10. Just like this section, uh, or just like last section, in this section, the one we're going to focus on is arc tan. But that doesn't mean the other two aren't useful or you might not see them. It's just that on the AP test, you're most likely going to see something like this, or the majority of the problems are like this. Uh, but arc sine has appeared from time to time as well. So this one I start is definitely the one you're going to want to commit to memory uh, sooner uh, rather than later. Okay, so how do we attempt these problems? Well, I guess the first thing we need to address is when do we even think about using these three formulas? Uh, the key to doing these problems is we need to look at our integral problems and try to find a pattern in them that we can see uh, being one of these three formulas. If it looks like one of these three integrals, then it's probably going to be one of those three. But before you even do that, when you're given these integral problems, I hope maybe as a process you've developed since we've uh, looked at these integrals way back in chapter four, was to kind of go through a process of asking yourself, can you first simplify your uh, integral? Because if you can, maybe this is just a very basic integral. In this case, there's nothing we can do to simplify this. Uh, we can't take this square root because there's terms in the bottom, uh, and there's just nothing we can do to you know, simplify this fraction. The second thing I hope you went on to try and to think about in terms of doing an integral was maybe considering a u substitution. And in this case, really the only thing that could be a u would be the 1 minus uh, x to the fourth, which would mean du is equal to negative 4x cubed dx. And you'll notice that really doesn't help us out here. Uh, negative 4x cubed, well, we only see a, a single x here. We only see an x to the first power. So that isn't going to really help us in terms of a substitution. Uh, so we've kind of exhausted our only two options. Uh, we can simplify it. We can use a u substitution. So maybe it falls into one of these three possibilities. And you'll notice it kind of looks like the arc sine formula. So the goal with these problems is to literally transform the problem into the formula. Because once you do, then you know this is the answer. So let's go ahead and try to do that. What we're looking for is to rewrite what's under the square root as a number squared, A is just a constant, a number squared minus uh, a u squared. So how can we do that? Well, you'll notice we can rewrite 1 as 1 squared because of 1. Of course, 1 squared is just 1. We can rewrite x to the fourth as something squared by writing x squared squared. The other thing I'm going to do is put the dx in the top of the x um, just to keep it all this one fraction. Once we've done that, we know what the a and the u are. We know a is 1, and we know u is x squared. So to complete this uh, process, because we got to get rid of all the x's and stuff so we can have just u's, as you can see in the formula, we need to take the derivative in our u box. And since we see an x dx here and an x dx here, and there is no 2 in our problem, we need to, of course, move that 2 over by dividing. And wherever we see an x dx, we're going to replace it with 1 half du. And of course, the 1 half will move to the front. So it's just going to be du over the square root of a squared minus u squared. And we've done what uh, our goal is. Our goal is to get the problem to look exactly like one of those three formulas. Because once you do, you know the answer is the antiderivative uh, of this uh, formula. The integral is equal to arc sine of u over a plus c. And of course, we want to plug in the u and the a. And since the a is just 1, it'll just be x squared. So our final answer will be 1 half arc sine of x squared plus c. 
Okay, this problem, again, I'm not going to go through the length of discussing the first two possibilities, but of course, this is not simplifiable if you sit down and uh, think about the possibilities, and there is no U substitution we can do here to get this problem to work. Because of that, and because it looks a lot like arc secant, we're going to attempt to make this problem look like the arc secant formula. So you'll notice, we want to have a u squared minus an a squared under that square root. The way we can rewrite 4x squared as something squared will be 2x quantity squared. The way we can rewrite 64 as a number squared is just to put 8 squared. But there's a little problem here. If you look at the formula, we're supposed to have a u times the square root of u squared minus a squared. We've already identified u to be 2x, and that's a problem. We need a 2x to be in front of that square root. So here's a little trick that uh, we've done a little bit this year, but you might have uh, forgotten from uh, past years. It is okay to put a 2 in the bottom of that fraction, just as long as we also put a 2 in the top of the fraction. Once we do that, now we've accomplished what we've uh, what we're trying to do. We have a u in the front because there's a 2x, and we have the form that we're looking for. And you'll also notice another great thing that happened. Wherever we see a 2dx, because we had to put that extra 2 in the top, we're going to replace that with a du. So the 2dx in the top becomes du. The 2x in the front of the square root is u. The 2x squared becomes u squared. And the minus 8 squared becomes minus a squared. We've accomplished our goal. We found we transformed our problem into the formula exactly, so we know what the answer is. It's what the formula tells you the answer is. And of course, we don't really want to leave uh, the a's and the u's there. We want to plug those back in from what we identified. So when we plug the u in of 2x and divide it by 8, I didn't really have space to show that step, but when we plug in the 2x and we divide that by 8, of course, we can simplify the 2 over 8, so that's just um, absolute value of x over 4, and then, of course, the 1 8 in the front of the arc secant, and then don't forget the plus c. Okay, those first two examples were fairly straightforward, uh, relatively speaking, um, and they were the just applications of those integral formulas that you saw at the top of the last slide. Unfortunately, sometimes those integral integration uh, formulas uh, for the trig functions, the inverse trig functions, can be disguised. And that's like this case right here. You might be looking at this and going, okay, we can simplify this, which would be true. We can't do a u substitution, which would also be true. And then on top of that, this doesn't look like any of those three formulas from the first slide. So then you might think, well, we're stuck. But the key is, it's disguised. Uh, we do have one of the three inverse trig functions here. It's just it's a little hidden uh, until we do a little uh, algebra work here to, to change it up. So the method we're going to have to employ here is uh, something you might remember back from Algebra 2, and that was something called completing the square. That method is a good strategy to use when we have quadratic functions that are trinomials in the bottom of a fraction. So if you recall, what we're trying to do when we're completing the square is to write something in this form where we have x plus or minus a number all squared plus another number. And if we can write it that way, that would look like our formula for arc tan. So that's the problem we're going to attempt to do. Um, the integral of dx over x squared minus 2x plus 10. So off to the side here, I'm going to do all the completing the square review work, uh, but if you happen to remember this, then this will just uh, serve as a, a little bit of a review, and maybe if you've forgotten this entirely, uh, it'll also serve as a really good review. Okay, the form of uh, completing the square here that we're going to use is what we're going to do is we're going to put parentheses around the first two terms, so the x squared minus 2x. We're going to put a plus, a little blank, which we'll fill in, and then we'll close the parentheses all around that. We'll move that constant, which in this case is a positive 10, to the outside of those parentheses, put a minus symbol, and then another blank. 
The reason we're doing that is whatever number we're going to put right here, if we're not going to change this problem and we're going to add it here, then we'd have to also subtract it here because, of course, if we add a number and subtract that same number, that's just zero. But the way that we're going to write it in there is going to help us transform this by something called completing the square. So what number goes in the blank? The number that goes in the blank is b over 2 squared. And just keep in mind, the number in front of uh, the a, I'm sorry, the number in front of the x squared we call a. The number in front of the b, I'm sorry, in front of the x we call b, and then a plus a c. That's the standard form of a quadratic equation. So the b in this case would be negative 2. We'll divide that by 2 and square it, which gives us an answer of 1. So that's the number that goes in that blank. The reason we're doing that, and the reason it's called completing the square, is because now this thing we can factor. Uh, I never mentioned it before, but the original one we had over in our problem was not factorable. When you complete the square, you're writing something that's factorable, and it's actually a perfect square. x squared minus 2x plus 1 becomes x minus 1 squared. And of course, 10 minus 1 is just 9. So that's kind of really the bulk of the work in essence, um, or the big uh, trick, I suppose, that you're going to have to use to do these types of problems. Um, because after that, it's fairly straightforward. Once you have it written uh, this way after you complete the square, the u and the a are fairly easy to identify. We want to have a u squared plus an a squared. And of course, it's kind of already done for us in a way. x minus 1 squared is, of course, your u squared. The way we can rewrite 9 as a number squared is, of course, 3 squared. So that would be our a. In this case, du is equal to dx. And we can make uh, one big substitution and uh, have this problem ready to go. dx becomes du. x minus 1 is, of course, our u. And a, we said, was 3, and we've accomplished that goal I mentioned in the first slide. We want to get our problem to look exactly like the formula. We just did that, so now we know the answer. The answer would be 1 over a, or 1 over 3, arctan of u over a, which is x minus 1 over 3, plus c. Okay, a couple more examples here. Uh, you'll notice that this problem looks a little bit similar to the last example we just did. We have a trinomial in the bottom that's a quadratic. We can't uh, simplify this. We can't do a u substitution. So maybe this is one of those arctan problems where we got to complete the square first. The very first thing we're going to do here is rewrite this integral. You'll notice we can factor out a 2 in the bottom of this uh, integral. If you factor out a 2, you'll be left with x squared plus 6x plus 15 on the inside here, all over dx. And of course, this constant of 2, we can pull out to the front of our integral as a 1 half, since it's in the bottom of our fraction. So hopefully that was nice and easy to see. And now this problem is very similar uh, to that last slide. In that last slide, we needed to complete this square. So rather than doing that off to the side, I'm going to just do it in a really big fraction here inside the problem. We're going to keep the first two pieces together, put a plus and a blank, move the constant of 15 to the outside of the parentheses, put a minus and a blank. To find the number that goes in the blank, we take the number in front of x, which is our b, divided by 2, and square that number, which is of course 9. So we'll put 9 in both of those spots. The reason, again, we're completing the square is because now this thing inside the parentheses is factorable, and on top of that, it's a perfect square. x plus 3 squared, and then 15 minus 9 is 6, and we still have our 1 half in the front. Okay, so what's our u? Well, the u, just like the last problem, is pretty easy to identify. It's x plus 3 squared. But here, we're going to have to think a little bit critically about this. Uh, in the last problem, I believe we were trying to find the number squared that would give us 9, which was easy. That was just 3. But what number squared gives us 6? 
Well, 6 isn't a perfect square, unfortunately. So how could we rewrite 6 so that it's a number squared? Well, if you think about it, we can write 6 as the square root of 6 squared. If you take the square root of 6 and square it, that's just 6. So a little bit different technique than the last problem because 6 is not one of our perfect square numbers. So maybe uh, this example will help illustrate how you can change a number that's not a perfect square into something that will work in this problem. So again, our u is x plus 3. And now you can see the number squared that gives you 6 would be square root of 6. Here, du is equal to dx, and now just like the last problem, it's just a matter of uh, making all these substitutions. Wherever we see a dx, we're going to replace it with a du, and of course we already knew the a and the u. And as a little reminder uh, printed from before, that's the formula for when we have the integral of du over u squared plus a squared, and we can plug all the stuff in that we know. 1 over a would be 1 over the square root of 6, but keep in mind, there was still this half in the front right here, so that's where we get that 1 over 2 there from. And then we're going to have arctan of u over a plus c. So really just another example of this completing the square, and then this little trick uh, when you don't have a perfect square number of how you write that as something squared. Okay, in this last example, um, it's kind of like an ultimate problem in a sense, where it's a combination of a couple different integral techniques. The first thing I need to point out here is that there is no simplification we can do here. And on top of that, we can't use a u substitution. If we were going to use a u substitution, it would probably need to be the 4 minus x squared. But then u prime would be negative 2x, and then that doesn't help us do anything to get rid of this numerator since it's an x plus 2. Because we can't do any u substitutions here or, um, or simplifying, what we're going to have to do is rewrite this sum, rewrite this as a sum of two quotients. We actually can split, even though it's going to be uh, ugly, we can actually split this into two separate fractions. We have two terms in the top, so we can take the x and divide it by that denominator, and take the positive 2 and also divide it by that denominator. Even though it's not uh, nice to look at, we can actually do that step. And maybe each of those integrals would be something we can do individually. So because of the sake, for the sake of space, and I just wanted to kind of show this little technique of rewriting uh, as a sum of two quotients, I'm not going to go through all the details of doing these two separate integrals, but just to point this out, and you might want to attempt these two problems um, on your own complete all the way through to the end. Um, this first integral will use a u substitution, where u is the 4 minus x, because u prime luckily works out nicely, or I should actually say du works out to be nicely, negative 2x dx. And of course, that'll get rid of that x in the top of the fraction. So in this uh, integral, it's going to be a basic u substitution. On the right integral, that looks like the form of arc sine. And the main reason it's not another u substitution is you'll notice there is no x in the top of this fraction like there was in the first one. So it can't be a u substitution. So this one follows the form of our arc sine uh, formula. Once you do that, uh, again, I'm not going to go through all the tiny steps of all this. I just wanted to illustrate this little uh, process of uh, splitting this into two uh, integrals. Uh, if you want to attempt all the little details of doing this problem and check and see if you get the same answer, uh, that would be a good idea. Uh, but I just wanted to again illustrate this little idea of uh, splitting this into two integrals because we can split the fraction into two pieces.